transformed in the blood of Jesus. And God, everything is done. This for your glory and all for your honor so that lives can be saved. Lives can be changed, oh God. Transformed, delivered, and healed in the name of Jesus. We bless your name, oh God, for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So again, a wonderful good afternoon. I trust that all of you are doing well. By the way, how are you all doing? Let me ask the question. How are you all doing? Pastor Dexter, how are you? Very well, thank you, Doc. Very well. Nice. And I realize that things are back to order. Um, actually, no, I'm on backup generator still. I'm on backup power. I'm hoping that it lasts throughout the program. God is good. God is good. God is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Matt Myers, how are you doing, man of God? I, I am good. I am wonderful, doctor. Very good. I am just thinking because of the internet glitches, I'm thinking if Minister Dexter maybe could make me one of the... Um, Hello, Mr. Dexter, Pastor Dexter, that I will nice. be able to help with the internet. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor. Pastor Mark. Yes. Okay. So, people, put something in the chat. You know what? I believe that you should really invite a few persons on the platform today. Normally, I don't say it, but send up the link, probably about three, four persons, and let them come on. A lot of people are struggling with pornography. And you all realize that we didn't, um, we didn't, we just left the topic just open. It means that the Holy Spirit is able to take us anywhere this afternoon. All right. You know, I believe that this, even as we're starting the discussion, I believe that this is an area of struggle for both men and women. There's this perception that um, men are the ones who struggle with pornography, but that is not true because females struggle as well, you know, and, um, as we, as I would, would have just said, it is a misconception and a woman who cannot say no to a man's sexual advances is also struggling. All right. Um, the sexual sin is an area of struggle. Um, the mere fact that it is means that there is a measure of difficulty in stopping. What am I saying? I'm saying that the mere fact that sexual sin is an area of struggle means that there is a measure of difficulty in stopping completely. That's why it's a struggle, all right? And that word struggling implies that it is difficult to say no. And one of the reasons why I believe that a, a, a believer may have difficulty in gaining victory in this particular area of life is because they may be addicted. And I know addicted is a strong word, but that's the word that I wanna use. And a little, as we continue, you will understand why. Um, someone who is addicted to something usually has difficulty in saying no. And most of us are familiar with various types of addiction. We know about gambling, smoking, eating, shopping, surfing, the internet, playing video games, and many others. But the truth is that there is a type of addiction called sexual addiction. And so I want to begin by defining it. Sexual addiction is a normal sex drive that has been to the point where the person's behavior is out of control. Um, it is referred to as a process addiction and takes the form of pornography, masturbation, and sexual crimes, such as rape and incest. And by reading from one of the books that I've published, okay, for you and um, my sources, Patrick Kane's 1991, Don't Call It Love, and the name of covering from sexual addictions, and Bill Perkins, 1997, When Good Men Are Tempted. All right, so let me read the definition again. Sexual addiction is a normal sex drive that has become obsessive to the point where the person's behavior is out of control. This is referred to as a process addiction and takes the form of pornography, masturbation, and sexual crimes, such as rape and incest. For the addict, the object of the addiction gives pleasure and the illusion of intimacy. And that word illusion means a false idea or belief about something or someone. It refers to something or someone with a deceptive appearance and it speaks to the deceptive power of appearances 
That is the ability of a parent is to deceive the mind and senses or the capacity of the mind to be deceived by appearances. And so some people are delivered from sexual addiction. However, some continue to block out emotional pain with sexual pleasure. And such persons refuse to deal with the source of their pain. At the moment of pleasure, they forget the pain. But when the pleasure ends, they have to face emotional pain that did not really go away. They desire to experience a sexual pleasure over and over again until they get hooked on it. Over time, such persons may try risky forms of sexual behavior in order to deaden the pain. Sexual arousal or pleasure replaces, and this is very important within the context of single and marriage, especially married persons, sexual arousal or pleasure replaces loving, intimate relationships, all right? And uh, I just want to touch a little bit on the different types of sexual addictions, but I want today we'll be zooming in on, um, on pornography, but there's fantasy sex, there's seductive sex role, role seductive role sex, there's anonymous sex, there's painful sex, trading sex, voyeuristic sex is the one that we'll be dealing with. There's exhibitionist sex, a lot of them, you know. There's intrusive sex, there's pain exchange, and there's exploitative sex, a number of them. But today we want to deal with voyeuristic sex. And it means it's, it is focused on observing people engaging in sexual activity rather than engaging in sexual contact yourself. Right? This can involve getting aroused using pornography, pictures in books, magazines, the computer, film, peep shows, or secretly observing people in the act. Voyeuristic tend to be combined with excessive masturbation that can even cause injury. I wanted to put that on the table before we continue. So today we're talking about the definition of sexual addiction and I would have given you all some information about that. Um, I touched a little bit on the types of sexual addiction. I didn't go into detail. I just went into, into giving you the definition of one voyeuristic that speaks to looking, taking pleasure in viewing, all right? And um, voyeuristic sex falls under the, um, pornography falls under the category of voyeuristic sex. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. All right, um, King David struggled with lust. We're looking at biblical characters now. And, you know, um, in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, all right, um, King David struggled. You know, I also want to touch a little bit the biblical cause of sexual addiction. You all realize that I have not zoomed into pornography as yet, but pornography is a sexual addiction, all right? So I want to talk a little bit about um, the cause, James chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. I want to read that, all right? And it says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So I wanted to put that scripture on the platform. I also want to read one definition of pornography. And then I'm going to hand over to the gentleman to, so that we can kick it off. All right. So I'm going to look at pornography. Pornography is defined as material that is predominantly sexually explicit and intended primarily for the purpose of sexual arousal. Pornography fuels and drives lust, devalues sex, and strips it of its emotional connection. 
and I want to just put that on the table. So we're looking at the definition. I don't know, and we're also looking at it within the context of sexual addiction. So I'm going to ask the gentleman to jump in, Pastor Dex, Pastor Matt, Pastor Dex, sir, I want you to, to jump in. Amen. A pleasant good evening to you, Dr. Pastor Mark, and to all our listeners and viewers on with us. You know, um, the battle against porn and sexual purity has raged for many generations, and it has become more sophisticated. You know, I remember when I was young, you know, there were um, pornography in, 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 in place of like books and and you know magazines and now we see where there has been a um a more evolution of pornography in fact it is now in the palm of our hands access to pornography is now in the palm of our hands so even when we look at the mere definition of pornography and interestingly when we look at Matthew 5 28 it says but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery in, with her in his heart and 1 Corinthians 6, 18 to 20 says to flee, to flee from, to flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own for you were brought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And I wanted to start there today because we are supposed to glorify God with our body. So even for the persons who may be on this evening or may, may be looking at this video footage after and may be trying to convince themselves that it's okay, that pornography is okay, I want to submit to you to ask yourself, is pornography glorifying God in your body? I wanted to start there. And as we go forward, you know, we ask the question again, what is porn? Pornography changes the habits of the mind, the inner private self, that inner person. It, it, its use can easily become habitual, which in turn leads to desensitization, boredom, distorted views of reality, and an objectification of women in many cases. And, you know, a lot of people also see um, there's a stimuli that becomes necessary to arouse habitual users. In, in, in other words, what happens is you, you need and require more stimulation to be aroused. So for the persons who marry and for the husbands and the wives who engage in, 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 in pornography, it becomes, it takes more and more to, be, to get you sexually stimulated. And allow me to again reiterate that our segments, parental discretion is strongly advised for our segments, especially, well, not especially, but our segments are um, parental guidance is strongly advised, right? So we look at the fact that in, in pornography, uh, a greater amount of sexual stimuli becomes necessary to arouse habitual pornography users. And this leads to them pursuing more deviant forms of pornography to fulfill their sexual appetite. And I want to just throw in one or two things again as we continue, as we continue to define and refine the near definition of, of pornography. So maybe you're on this evening and you're wondering, you know, porn addiction, am I addicted? Well, when you can't stop looking at porn, even if you want to, it is defined as porn addiction. The obsession gets to the point that it interferes with work, relationships, and other parts of your daily life. It's easy to understand how this could be a problem. And when we look at the widespread availability of pornography, as I was saying just now, the fact that all you need to do is go on your cell phone, go on your tablet, go on your computer, and it's there, it, you know, it makes it even harder. You know, um, in 2019, for example, the, popul the, the popular site Pornhub recorded 42 billion visits. That's 150 million visits to, to a porn site in a day. 150 million. It speaks to the issue why pornography is, in fact, an issue. The World Health Organization added that compulsive sexual behavior as a mental health disorder was added to the, the Diagnostical Statistical Manual, which is actually the manual that psychologists use 
um, and, and um, psychiatrists used to diagnose mental health issues. And they would have added compulsive sexual behavior. And though pornography wasn't spoken in there, neither did any other addiction. It refers to repetitive sexual activities becoming a central focus of a person's life. And we see that a lot when persons become addicted to pornography. And it goes to the point that they neglect their health, their personal care, um, even the interests and activities, the job and the responsibilities. And there was a study that was done um, with men who sought um, treatment for problematic pornography use. And it showed that their brains responded to sexual images that gives, and, and, and this gives credence, it, it, it gives credence to the fact that the same brain activity shown in drug or alcohol addiction, when, 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 when yes. we look at it, it is the same reaction that happens in the brain for persons who engage in pornography, All right? So I wanna pause there and back over yes. to you as we continue. Yes, that's right. Because you place on the table. Pastor Dexter, you spoke about the law of diminishing returns. All right. Um, that law that law purports that it takes more and more stimulation to get the same degree of pleasure. Previously, for example, a kiss would excite, but becomes less exciting than what comes next. And so the persons feel that in order for them to get the same rush, they have to move on to, to more intense and even dangerous sexual experiences. All right. So I just wanted to just you know, just touch on that a little bit. Pastor Dex also spoke about compulsion. And that brings me to the levels of addiction because there are different levels. There's pre-addiction level. And that first level is called, is a level where the person finds themselves sexually stimulated through impersonal objects, such as pornography and going to strip clubs and Pastor Dex would have given us a little statistics. And these behavior occur before the person becomes addicted. All right, some people decide to change their behaviors while others continue and reach the stage where they're unable to stop. All right, and so we have level one where some persons, where, where um, they, they, but, let me just read this again. In, um, by this, in level one, they are unable to control themselves. And this person is compulsively involved in masturbation, pornography, and even homosexual or demeaning heterosexual relationships. All right, so what is compulsion? Compulsion is an irresistible impulse to act, all right? Compulsions are involuntary um, activities and are not performed for pleasure. Instead, a person with a compulsion feels the need to engage in a particular behavior to relieve or avoid distress or worry, all right? And I think that, was, that is so important to note that it's even not so much about the sex, but sometimes a lot of people engage themselves in pornography and these kinds of behaviors to release tension, to release stress and to overcome worries. Pastor Man. Yes, doctor. You know, I, I, I was just sitting here and I'm thinking about, you know, porn, persons who look at porn. Folks, let me tell you something. A lot of times, you know, they are, there are ways that seem it right to a man, but the end thereof, let me tell you something, it will kill you, it will destroy you. I sit here and I think like I think about porn and um I just think about acid. You know, the day that acid touches skin, it is very hard to, to fix it back. You understand? It takes Christ, God, to help you, you know, from this addiction and what porn is really. It's addiction. And, you know, porn is one of the most destructive things one man say in the world. You know, we talk about Woolwin and all kind of different things and earthquake and all kind of things. The man say, listen, one of the most destructive things in the world is porn, really. That addiction literally destroy everything. It's like I said, it, it destroys every, everything. It is horrible. You understand? And, and it pollutes your eye. You, your eye is a gate. 
and uh, you, it have the eye gate, it have the mouth gate, it have the different gates in your body and the eyes. And as a deliverance minister to a deliverance pastor, I would have to pray for so many people who have looked at porn. Folks, it pollutes your eye gate. And when that eye gate become polluted, it's an open door. It destroy your mind. Porn, for people who look at porn, is not easy to get over or to get delivered from that. It has to take an intervention of the Holy Spirit. That don't just go away just so. So porn, persons who look at porn, it destroy your mind and it changed. Sometimes a man or a woman your personality, the way that you normally operate, you start seeing things different. You start talking different. You start acting different. Because what happened now? When you got addiction stepping, I look at it as a demon as well. When that it changed your personality because now it's the next entity or in operation. It's, it's like a man taking drugs. You want to stop and it seems like you can't stop. I mean, I see a man stand up in a line, he buying stuff, face, he buying things that could help his, his body and, and take care of himself. But why is he standing up in the line? He watching a porn. That'll tell you how dangerous and how addictive porn is. You will, you will want to do it anywhere. It weaken your soul. And when the enemy have your soul, it's something else. And it destroy. You know, even when you look at some of the movie stars, you hear certain ones of them talking about the porn. It can destroy your marriage. You understand? And I know they are because, I mean, I mean, I was young. And as a young man, you will look at porn. I don't know nobody who never look at porn, but when you don't have the understanding of a thing, now we get in wisdom, now we get in understanding. It hurts your relationship with others. It hurt your relationship with your marriage, in your marriage, because now you, you're telling yourself that spirit of porn now, you, you was a nice man, you was a nice woman to your wife, but now, there is a spirit now, and now it's an open door for lust. That will tell you how porn, watching porn, how it operates. Now we have a spirit of lust, and now it, it exposes you to sex in a, in a different way. You understand that you're having all type of sex in all kind of way that normally It have that type of sex. So I want to say, Dr. Porn is something, yes. it's very, very, very dangerous. And it leads to sin. Yes, Sadly, right. it leads to sin and many go that direction. Yes. yes. That's right. You know, well said, Pastor. Because, because the thing is, when you expose yourself to anything, your it changes your perception of your world, your world changes you. The way you view people, the way you view men and women and children and animals, mm -hmm. and the way you view sex, the way you view marriage, um, the way you view rape, <laughs> the way you view abuse, sexual abuse, it changes your perception of marriage and it changes your perception as well of of the role or the sexual role of your spouse. All right, and the other thing about it as well is that whatever you look at, your flesh develops an appetite for. And so yeah. as a trained social worker and also as a professional counselor, over the years, I remember a long time when I was at the university, you know, and you, we know about the ancestral, incestuous cases, sexual abuse and so on. Um, 
we with a you know long time it was like okay it has to be that this person may have been exposed to their father or their mother or an uncle or somebody all right? and that's why they are doing it to this child all right but I don't want to say that that has changed because that is so, so in a lot of cases. But what am I saying now is that because of the of pornography, we, we what we what we are surmising is that because persons are exposed to to pornography and now there's a desire for a young girl or there's a desire for a child. So you never saw your father or anybody um, um, be inappropriate sexually to a child. You never grew up like that. You were never exposed to it. But because you are now um, exposed to pornography, mm -hmm. you are seeing all kinds of things that, that, that normally you weren't exposed to before. And because of that, your flesh develops the appetite for what you are looking at. If you're looking at, yep. at um, same sex, if you're looking at sex with animals, bestiality, whatever you are looking at, sex with children, I mean, come home. So you want to know where it is coming from. You want to know why sometimes an adult would interfere with a child. It's also because of pornography. And as Pastor Mark and, and um, Pastor Dex would have said, it is very, very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. And after a while, you, you don't perceive the act as wrong. So you may hear on the news where um, somebody would have molested a child or whatever. And because of what you look at, your whole value system concerning that changes. And you are more tolerant, all right? And uh, I also want to place on the platform, as well as we look at the definition, that there are some persons um, who are addicted to pornography who use it to alleviate loneliness, all right? Loneliness. And what they don't understand is that the more you look at it, is the lonelier you will be. Before they got married. Now, if you're addicted to porn, I mean, I said that porn, porn. Masturbation is defined as self stimulation for gratification. It is also referred to as solitary sex. When a husband and wife stimulate each other, it is mainly for the gratification of, the, of each other. They are married, it's husband and wife. And this is referred to as mutual stimulation. But a person who masturbates train himself or herself to be self-centered. It is all about, about you. The addiction becomes more important than sex with one's partner and often leads to neglect of the partner. And I wanted to read that because when you're addicted to pornography before you get married, you don't have a problem when your spouse gets vexed with you. When your wife says she ain't giving you sex, you don't have a problem because you know you can go in the next room and masturbate or look at porn and you're good. So when, when the Bible says you two come together as one, and, and that, that scripture is loaded, but it also speaks to sexual um, intercourse. All right? And that is how God wants it to happen. And so we got to be so careful when we are substituting these things for what God has ordained to occur, sex to occur between the husband and wife and the husband and wife to gratify and to satisfy each other sexually. I feel like I needed to see that. Some people are known to use masturbation to help them to sleep, just as someone takes a sleeping pill or for, or for sleep inducement. And this is described as a masturbation thrill. The truth is that the intimate relationship that is shared with their spouse becomes secondary to the addiction because persons are also addicted to masturbation. The partner believes that the spouse is more interested in the addiction than in he or she. All right, so what does a person who masturbates think about? It is believed that most, if not all, imagine or fantasize about a man or a woman, or I guess anything that appeals to them during the act. The Bible says in Matthew chapter five, verse. Verse 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, cautions us to think about what is pure. But many persons who masturbate are unable to control themselves for after a while, and they become obsessed. Obsession. All right? God's plan is for a husband and a wife. Masturbation must never replace sex between the husband and the wife. All right? I needed to say that. Pornography, and I'm saying that they go together. Okay, we become what we feed our minds with. We become influenced positively as well as negatively by people, by things and by our environment. We can be aroused by a scene on a television. Pastor Mark says almost everybody um, is exposed to pornography. I guess there are some people who are exposed to pornography by choice. And there are some people who are exposed, but not by choice because you just have to walk down the street it's all it's right in front of you. You don't have to put on your phone. You just have to look out your window sometimes and it's right there. All right? And so the thing about it is that the, the, the television, the advertisements in the daily newspaper, um, a flirtatious coworker or a neighbor, we must be truthful about what we have the ability, what has the ability to entice us. And a lot of times in the body of Christ, we are not truthful. And when we are not truthful, then we are easy prey to the devil. Bearing in mind that the enemy attacks our weak areas. Pastor Dexter. You know, Doc, and, and the deeper we go, you know, if we think pornography use is just a, a Trinidad and Tobago issue, you know, that's not the case. Pornography no. use and the effects of it is global. You know, nearly right. 40 million Americans are regular visitors to porn sites and they last an average of six minutes and 29 seconds on. And it begs the question, what are you doing when you go on for six minutes and 29 seconds? 55% of men and 25% of married women say that they watch porn at least once a month. And, and, and you know, 2.47% mm -hmm. of families in the U.S. report pornography in their home. Pornography increases infidelity by a rate of 300%. This is why it's an issue. 56% of divorces involve mm -hmm. one party having an obsessive interest in pornography. Four years is the average age a child is first exposed to porn. 94% of children will see porn by the age of 14 years old. This is big. And, we, and sadly, and when we look at these statistics globally based on Google Trends, the highest number of internet searches for pornography per capita is Trinidad and Tobago. And we have been in first place since 2014. And it screams wow. the issues that we are faced with because pornography has a significant effect on all stages of family life. If yes, we look at a child exposed to pornography within a family setting, pornography causes stress to that child and increases the risk of developing negative attitudes about the nature and purpose of human sexuality. And then we see all sorts of things in our children where they struggle to find sexual identity. When we look at adolescents who view pornography, their attitudes towards their own and others' sexuality changes and their sexual expectations and behaviors are shaped accordingly. So That's when you right. develop a, a, a twisted or a skewed perception of sexual um, of, of, of sex, that's what they do. And doc, that goes in line with what you were saying just now. And for adults, pornography has harmful and even destructive effects on marriages. And that's one of the biggest things. If you're single today and you're listening and you're saying, well, I'm not married, so I don't have nothing to worry about. Hear this. Pornography significantly distorts attitudes and perceptions about the nature of sexual intercourse. Yes. And so persons looking at pornography have a higher tolerance for abnormal sexual behaviors. And that's why you're saying that sexual aggression, promiscuity, mm -hmm. and even rape, you know, men begin to view women and even children as sex objects as commodities mm -hmm. of instruments for their own pleasure and not for the purpose that sex was created for by God. Yes. This, and you, you, you see, Doc, the more we go into this, I, I really want persons to take the time to pause here because, hey, this is a very big issue that has been plaguing our world. 
you see, even when we look at, at, at it from the, from the aspect of men, men are more than six times as likely to view pornography as females. And you know, men, we are more likely to spend more time viewing it as well. And, and I'm running in because even in, in a study of self-identified females, cyber sex was pointed out. You know, a lot of women prefer not to look at the, 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 the sexual activity, but to conversate using cyber sex and conversating about sex and talking to somebody in a sexual and explicit manner, mm -hmm. right? This preference may contribute to the significant difference one study found in the proportion of women who have real life sexual encounters with their online companions. So we see where it grows. We would have yes. dealt with infidelity. Um, we, 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 we would have dealt with adultery. And we've seen where yes. pornography mm -hmm. leads to sex outside of marriage and also adultery as well. You know, it found that 80% of women who engage in these online sex sexual activities also had real life sexual encounters with their online partners compared to a much lower mm -hmm. proportion of 33% women. So we see where in this case, women are engaging in higher levels of, of cyber sex and adultery and sex outside of marriages based on their pornographic encounters online. That's right. And so it mm -hmm. screams and continues to scream. And I want to go into, Doc, just before I hand over, I just want to go into another point here. When we look at married couples, mm -hmm. married couples, a man's pornographic, uh, pornography addiction can, can have devastating impacts on himself, his wife, and the family. Countless marriages and broken families have been a direct result of a man's porn use. And men, we are in the front when it comes to porn, porn use. And, and therefore, if it has to change, if it has to divert, then we must be the, 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 the persons who would push to change this. This Unfortunately, porn is equally damaging to a single man. And I don't want to think, young man, that, well, I single, I'm married, I do have an issue. Because for the singles, and this is not just for the men, but for the singles, it can keep him or her single longer and doc you said that or prevent him from having a lasting relationship because nothing matches up to what i see on tv girl you're not matching up boy you're not matching up in fact your penis too small because i know what i see on, on the on the on the tv and and girl this is i do like how we are looking and these are the perceptions that come up and we forget about god institution you know and 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 and, yeah. and, and we tend to make it something that it was not meant to be so, Doc, I'll pause there a little bit because I know yes. a lot as we continue yes. to, to pull it together. Very correct. Because, you know, when you mentioned um, um, about the size, I think about the marriages and because what you see is what you, you, you want to happen to you when you go to bed with your spouse. You want your spouse to do exactly what you, what you see because you took pleasure in it. And because you took pleasure in it, you want to act and you have your spouse. It's not as if you're not married. So then the demands on the spouse are greater. All right. Um, things that when you all got married long time years ago or whatever, you all weren't doing because you now, and may I say you don't you it doesn't have to be that you're addicted to porn, but that you you, know, you just start looking at it, the addiction and reach yet. All right, but you're making demands on your spouse, you're making demands on your husband, you know, you're making you're you're you're, you're making derogatory comments on your husband's um size in the size you know you're making derogatory comments on your wife and what she's not doing and you you know you i, I will get it outside so uh, the, the language that that takes place in the marriage is not of god and you may be saying but is that happening in the body of christ yes it is a number of fact a lot of believers are addicted to pornography all right both men and women and when we talk about our young men and we talk about our singles I always say that I believe that um, um, a man and a woman, a boy and a girl should be prepared for marriage from childhood, from young. The young man, the boy knows how to throw, how to treat with girls. He's prepared to respect your little girls and the little girl as well. She's trained and not to disrespect the little boy and we train them from young. So you can imagine in terms of sexual socialization where we have um, our, our, our young, 
a boy, a boy in his home, let's say daddy, that he, he, get, he has his father's phone or his mother's phone, and he sees the phone. All right, the, young, the little girl as well. So they're exposed very young. Now, when a young boy is exposed, all right, and he's stimulated and he wants to try it, who is closest to him? Sister. His cousin. The neighbor. Who is closest to the child? The people who are around. So then we have now the brother going in on his sister. You see? And when the niece, the cousin come for holidays because they, they want to try it out. Just as how the, the husband or wife want to try it out with their spouse in the same way, the children want to try it out as well. And they want to try it out even at school. So we have, obviously, it interferes with our families, right? It is toxic to our families. It is, the Bible says, do not awaken love before it's time. Um, Love, sexual desire, and passion is awakened much too early with our young boys and our young girls. So, by, and so obviously, because of that, we are very promiscuous, and because of that, that now will also impact upon the love, the amount of, of of pregnancies, teenage pregnancies, um, teenage fathers. That now in, impacts upon the amount of abortions that now impacts upon persons getting married very young because they're pregnant. And then when they get married very young, um, because they get married, because they're pregnant, problems in the marriage. And then you have, it impacts upon the level of separation and divorce in our society, not only within the body of Christ. So when you really check it out, you see how it just moves, it just grows and it, it has far reaching effects in our homes, in family life, in our communities, and in the nation and in society as a whole. And we are saying as a church, we have a responsibility to talk about it. The Bible says, Bible 16 to 18. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts after the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And it's very clear that we as believers should be led by God. So when we are looking at our, our, our pictures on the TV or on the internet or whatever, we have to bring that flesh under subjection. We, we have to understand that, hey, I cannot afford for this to just, just um, like a wild horse, to just go wherever it wants to go. I have to bring it under subjection to the word of God and to the spirit of God. This is what I have to do. And so this is taking us straight now into how do we win the battle? Because it is a battle. It is a struggle against the flesh and the spirit. It is a struggle against the kingdom of God or the kingdom of light, right? And the kingdom of darkness. It's a struggle. And a lot of us are caught up, caught up in the kingdom of darkness. We cannot just seem to come out of it. Apostle Paul says, but that is what some of you were, but you were bought with a price. Now I know I say all of this, but I know for those of you who are addicted, it is not so easy. And we may say, well, okay, I want to put on the table one of the first things you want to do is acknowledge the fact that you, you have, you're struggling. Acknowledge the fact that you're struggling. Admit that, hey, and not, I'm not doing well. I, I, you know, I realize that every time I take off the TV, I put on my phone, always in the night and getting up and I go in for my phone. I realize that I'm hiding from my spouse. I realize that I'm taking the vehicle and I'm driving all over the place and I'm parking up underneath a tree and then a car park. So you're in the car park and that's where you're on. Night time, people sleeping. All right. But we have to understand one, that we have our children, we are accountable to God first, we are accountable to our children. All right, and we are accountable to our spouses, our families. All right, and for our own deliverance, it's important for us to address it. Pastor Matt. And that is so true, to Doctor. You know, persons need to, you know, sometimes you have to confront the thing, you know, but sometimes yeah. it's a secret here, you know. Did that, that I tell you, porn is making you feel shame, you know. It, it, it put a shame on you and, and make you feel guilty and, you know, and unclean. Yeah. You know, folks, 
pawn kill you spiritually, yeah? Because let's say you're doing great things for the Lord and um, you start looking at pawn, it, it weakens you. You can't, you can't minister the way that you normally will minister truthfully because you know that sin grip you, that, that demonic spirit grip you. So spiritually, yeah. mentally, in your mind, your mind is something else, you know, your conscience alone will judge you. When you, you want, you're doing great things, you know, you want to, you're praying still, but let me tell you, it's not effective. You know that. Mm. It's not that guilt slapping you all over. You're guilty. It's like a man, he does have sex last night, but he preaching the gospel today. If you really, really love and fear God, that conscience will deal with you. And that is what porn do for you. It, it make you feel guilty. It make you feel nasty. It's not, and I know it's not easy to get rid of that spirit. That, that opened a door for fantasy too as well. Eh? You know, I used to believe that, you know, and I, it happened to a lot of persons. Sometimes a persons become a homosexual. They become a lesbian. It's not that somebody interfere with them, you know. Sometimes it's the door. But a lot of times it's because somebody interfere with them. But a lot of time to the door that they open by looking at that spirit of porn. And, you know, men and all get carried away, doctor, because here it is a man, you, as I mentioned before, you're good with your wife. Now you see something and your wife telling you, I am not doing that. So you're going and you find a woman outside now to do certain things. That outside woman, she will only do that for a while, you know. She didn't really want to do that kind of foolishness that we look at that porn, you know. And as I often tell person, your rectum wasn't made for sex. So now you're looking at porn and now... You want to use your rectum because it feels better and all these kind of things. These things open doors for all kind of demonic spirit to enter. So even that spirit of adultery, you're a good man, you love God. But let me tell you something, when that spirit holds you, it don't let you go just so. And now you're committing incest, rape, your exposure, that. So you have to be careful, folks. And yeah. and as doctors say, you're looking at porn. Talk to somebody that can help you. Satan has caused huge porn. You know, that call it a pandemic or a perverting, that perverting spirit of being married. And the scripture tells us to have a clear mind. Yeah. But how can you have a clear mind when you're messing with filth? It can't happen. You're degrading person by the loss, the way that you lost after them. Now we might say, you know what? I wouldn't bring my prostitute in my house. Now them can't come in my house. Every time you put on your TV and you look at them, that is what you're doing. They're in That's your house right. already. Yeah. And I see little children. I have to pray for little twelve year old. And the demon will tell you, listen, oh, you come in here. I come in from looking at porn in school. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And then children falling in their work now. When you was a top student in, in, in your class, you can't function again, you know. Because here we're going on. A door is open. And the devil is so wicked. When that door open, he bring in all kind of friends. So you're seeing sexual impurity coming in. You're seeing loss coming in. Hey, fantasy calling, fantasy say, come by. And fantasy calling, masturbation, masturbation. We are room here. And then masturbation calling, homosexuality and, and lesbianism, come by, come that Because this is the spirit yes. that associate themselves with porn. Adultery, fornication, incest, hollow tree, all of them kind of spirits. So get help. Don't be ashamed, you know. You because you and and that is why men are as I say now a man going outside now but no look at it look at the trap people himself in the outside woman now doing that but she will only do that for a while and you leave your good wife or you leave your good husband because you open a door for that adulterous spirit.
So folks, we have to be careful. So I want to say porn kills love. Remember that, doctor. Well said, pastor. It does. Because when you, when you have a spouse who, um, who is addicted, even if they're not addicted, but you realize that they begin to look at it, you don't feel good. You feel as if it comes before you in the relationship, the marriage. All right. Um, I want to also put on the table, identify what triggers your lust. Because a lot of times there are triggers. It could be a song. So you're home with your spouse and you know, you're, you're just you know, you're, you just came from Bible study. You're home as a believer, or even if you're not a believer, you're home, you're, everything going fine. And then all of a sudden, you just hear this song. And from the time you hear this song, you're going on your laptop. That is the trigger. It could be a song. It could be an old lover, somebody from the past. It could be a movie. It could be a photograph. All right? Identifying triggers allows us to see whether there is a pattern of temptation emerging or situations and environments that entice us. You have to know certain kind of songs when you play them, that is it, you don't go on already. So you know you can't play those songs. As well as identify conversations, relationships and circumstances that cause you to be vulnerable and make the necessary changes. You will know what triggers. When I see my clients, well, it doesn't matter what, I would usually want to identify what was happening at, at the time when this thing started? A lot of times something is happening, there's a trigger. Once you're able to identify the trigger, then you know, wow, oh my God. When this happens, I realize that the last four times this happened, this I needed to go and do this particular thing. So then you know, don't do that thing. Do expose yourself to it. All right? So we're talking about how do we win the battle? First of all, after we talk about acknowledging the fact that you have an issue admitting it. You cannot fight this battle. And in your own strength. Because some of you listen to this video, you may say they could only, could only talk because some of you are really addicted and you would have tried several times and it's just not happening for you. I want you to know that we cannot do anything as believers in this life without the strength and power of the Holy Spirit. And if you are not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you are struggling with any kind of sexual addiction, it may even be incest, it may be um, masturbation, pornography, it may be any one of the others, all right? What am I saying? Give your life over to Christ. When you give your life over to Christ, then the spirit of God will now help you, that lives on the inside of you, will give you the strength and the power now to be able to kick the habit and to overcome the addiction. I wanted to say that. All right. I also want to say that it is important to build up the spirit man. Build up your spirit man by reading your word, getting involved in your, reading the word and studying the word. And, you know, sometimes when persons are addicted to pornography and these things, you don't want to go to church because you feel as though the pastor will see, especially if it's a prophetic ministry. In, in Destiny Shalom or Jewish Ministries, it's an apostolic prophetic ministry. The Lord will show, you know, you think sometimes that your pastor don't know, listen to me. The spirit of God, he speaks. Sometimes you have a dream. Sometimes he tells you. Sometimes I could just look at somebody and know if that person had an abortion. I could look at this person and know if they masturbated. The spirit of God, once you have a relationship with God, he will tell you and he will show you. So you may think that you're hiding, but a lot of times the people sometimes are wrong, you are aware. And that is why it's important to surrender to God and get the counsel as well. Somebody that you trust and who is confidential. Get into the world, build up the spirit man. Right? The spiritual food is the word of God. Read the word of God by which you can grow. Get involved in prayer and in worship. Develop your relationship with God. All of these things will help you to be strong. Surround yourself with godly people. Be careful the music you listen to. Be careful the things that you look at. Be careful the conversations that you keep. Sometimes you're in your workplace or you may be um, studying at the university, <clears throat> pardon me, or at school. And the conversations around you on your job, the things that people, the fellows and the, or the people in the, in the lunchroom, the conversation, when you're leaving and you're driving home, that's all playing over in your mind. 
that could be a trigger. So be careful. It's okay to walk away. All right? Walk away. The Bible says, clothe ourselves with the, with, the, with the word of God. Be careful who visits you. Be careful who calls you. Be careful who you go out with. All right? What I found as well is that in marriages, there are some Christian couples who actually look at porn before they have sex. It is not of God. So don't tell me, Dr. London, um, well, I didn't really look at it by myself, you know, and the bed is on the fire. It's me and my wife or me and my husband that just look at it. It is not of God. Yeah? And you need to stop. It is of the devil. Don't mix. Pastor Dexter. Amen, Amen, Doc. So, you, you know, I, I'm listening to you there and, and, and one of the things that stands out is, okay, so you're having issues. And I want to emphasize as one of our solutions here, meaningful, healthy communication with your spouse. Yeah. Meaningful, healthy communication. Okay, so you're not satisfied in the bed. Things not going right in the bed. In fact, you, you, you don't think you ever had an orgasm with your husband. Or you're having sex with your wife and you just, it's like you, you, you're not satisfied. You don't like something. Maybe it's the problem is something deeper. Maybe there's a health issue. Maybe there's something on the line. Maybe there's an issue with hygiene. Maybe there's something. But you keep it to yourself. And when the spouse fall asleep, you go in the other room, you please yourself, and you come back like nothing happened. Yes. And a lot of the times, porn pornographic viewing is fueled by underlying issues. And when it is unchecked, when it is left, um, when it is not dealt with, then we try to find a way to cope. And the coping becomes pornography. The coping becomes cyber sex. The coping becomes that. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the root issue and the root cause, Doc, you were saying it. The root cause mm -hmm. there, we start seeing issues like, well, I'm lonely. He, he just leave me and go. Or she just, she just never home. Mm -hmm. And so when i lonely and feel lonely, listen to what Doc was saying. When I feel lonely you now and I'm alone, then I, I go and put on the laptop. I, 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 I switch to pornography on the phone. I look at it on the tablet. Sometimes it's because you, you know the relationship was passionate before. You now get married and things was on fire. And then the relation, it's like the sex, the passion in the marriage die or die or diminish. And now you're viewing pornography one to try and get that kind of fire back. The worst place to look for advice on how to please your spouse is pornography. Don't waste your time. Yeah, that's it's right, a Pastor. trap and a lie of the enemy. Don't tell yourself, well, you will bounce your head. Let me say that way. You will bounce mm -hmm. your head. Do not revert to looking at pornography with the aim of, okay, well, if we try this and try that, it will improve. Please, no, don't. Because there are underlying issues. And again, I want to say it sometimes even as man, you know you have a medical issue, you know, because you cannot maintain an erection, no matter how you try. And you know what you're doing? Before you run to the bed, you're putting on pornography to see if you could become a little aroused before. Trap of the enemy. Trap of the devil. Mm -hmm. Trap, trap. And these are the traps when we look at it in relation to pornography. We really have to pay attention. Sometimes it's our self-confidence. I don't believe I got in bed. Let me see. I don't believe I got in bed. So when, well, and, and Doc, you know, sometimes again, some persons believe that, you know, the whole aspect of porn use, when they view viewing porn, they become a star. <laughs> Especially for these singles. I don't have mm -hmm. to contend with nobody because when mm -hmm. I look at porn, it's me, and this person I view, you know, whatever that, that catches my eye. And for that one moment, I don't have to worry about not having confidence. I don't have to worry about low self-esteem. I don't have to worry about not pleasing anybody but myself. And it's a selfish act. 
it even is. as a single, it's a selfish act because God didn't design yes. it that way. No. And 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 therefore it takes it takes the, the word of God that says in the multitude of counselors there is safety. But you're not telling nobody that. Because no. you know, it, talking about sex already taboo for a lot of, of, of persons. And so the other aspect of it, Doc, is anxiety and boredom. Yeah. A lot of persons, you're anxious about if you could perform, men, you're anxious about if you could perform in the bed. So you know what? You're masturbating before you go and lie down with your spouse. Because some way, in some way, you hear some partner say, or somebody say, if you masturbate before, you will last longer. Come on. Come on. Think about it carefully. Be aware of the traps. Be aware of the traps, fetishes, and kinks that comes up and persons start seeing things in porn and they want to come and start acting it out home with their wife or acting it out home with their husband. You come to them and telling your husband, how are you looking lazy? So how are you this and how are you that and how are you the other? Because you're seeing something that is Hollywood. Mm. You're seeing something that is, is not realistic. And then you're coming to try and make that happen in real. And that affects the whole relationship. And guess what would happen again? The whole aspect of the conflicts now. Yes. Some people battling sexual orientation. I'm not sure what I like anymore. I'm not sure if, 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 I'm, if, if I'm a heterosexual, or if I'm a homosexual anymore, because I like what I see now. I feel I like girls. I feel I like boys now. Because yes. that's the trap of the enemy. And I'm saying, be careful of the traps. And listen, technology is a trap as well. If you know that you cannot go on a device without going on one of the porn sites, there's software to block it. You know? There's software to start pulling yourself in line. So you could, yes. you could download certain software that would stop the device from going on to the pornography. And even for our children, take the time to check our devices, download the right set of apps that would guard our children's eye gates and air gates from the pornographic material because it just pops up sometimes. Yeah, that's right. It pops up. And so I will pause there, Doc, as we continue. Yeah. Well said. Well said. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8, now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is good for them to stay on my this what Apostle Paul is saying, unmarried as I am. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Apostle Paul is not saying, well, if I can't control myself, the first man I meet, uh, you see me, I want to get married, and the man says, go marry me, so I'm going to marry. No, you have to take your time and prepare yourself and make sure that that is the one. So we're not saying you're running on anything. But the point that I want to make is that the Bible says that if you are burning, you're feeling hot, you can't control yourself, you just want sex, you just want to have sex. It's like, oh my God, if you are burning, the Bible says get married. Not to look at poor. That is your remedy. You're burning, get married. All right? So the Bible speaks to that in terms of our singles and all the other things that you feel that like you want to do as single persons in the church. The Bible says, hey, if you're struggling, get help. Because we know the struggle is real. We know that. And I want to say is that even as we're talking about treatment, that if you realize that you will you you relapse because sometimes you may be going along so well and then oh my god you just see a song or you just see um somebody that you had a relationship with in the past and you go you're just going and i want to encourage you that even if you relapse as you like to say just off your clothes and get back up again don't be disheartened don't be hard on yourself all right don't let it frustrate you because sometimes a relapse could frustrate you but you know what Put your hope in God. Get back up again. All right, get back up again. And sometimes there are persons who would say, I try, I try, and i just not able to get over to sing. You see me? I'm waiting on God to, to, to just deliver me and take it away. God could do that. But you have some work to do. You have to give it up. You're waiting for God to take it away. And God is telling you, give it up with the help of my, of my spirit. 
All right? Give it up with the help of the Holy Spirit. Nice? I want to read this. You became addicted because of your attempts to numb the pain that you experienced in your life. For some persons, it's from childhood. All right? And so I want to say, stop blaming God for your inability to do what he has asked you to do. It is my belief that when the Apostle Paul spoke about the thorn in the flesh, right? It was something that was meant to keep Apostle Paul humble. Remember that addictions are deep-rooted and you may take a while to be completely delivered. During the process, you will experience pain, but don't try to run from it. You have to give it up. It's not the torn in the flesh. The torn in the flesh will not be, to me, in my understanding, sin. God allowed it. All right? A lot of times, there may be something that is keeping us humble. I, want, I just wanted to say that. I want to say as well that if you feel pain, um, sometimes you're frustrated because you realize you're just not able to give it up and you cry, cry, that is okay. That is okay. All right? Also, I just want to just mention a little bit about deliverance because deliverance is very important. If you believe that you need to be deliverance, go to your pastor, your pastor can pray for you. You can pray a prayer of deliverance. Or your husband or your wife could pray a prayer of deliverance. All of us have the Holy Spirit in us. And you can pray for deliverance from the demonic spirit yourself if you're a believer. And believe. All right? Your husband, husband do it to the wife and the wife pray, the pray for the husband. And you go to your pastor, as the case may be. All right? A person who is plagued by sexual addiction is demonic. Is a, a person who is plagued by sexual addiction is demon possessed or under the influence of a demonic spirit and needs to be delivered. You open up your gate, you're exposed, the demonic spirit will come in. Right? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, that many came, they were brought to Jesus and he healed them, he delivered them. All right? Now, you cannot counsel a demon. So if someone is demon possessed, and they're coming and they get counseling, it will help with their healing because they're, they're able to talk about it. And when they talk about it, oh, they feel so good because it's been a secret and they've been carrying it all the time. So they feel good at their family. Oh my God, they finally talk to Pastor Dex or Pastor Mark or, or, or Dr. London or somebody who they could trust about it. And it's like a big load off their shoulder. All right. However, there's still the need to be prayed for and that demon needs to be cast out. All right, and we know that Jesus did it when he was on earth. To deliver means to be set free, to be liberated and released. And to deliver means to save. All right, Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From evil. Okay, God wants to deliver us. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 72, verse 12, for he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted, who have no one to help. Deliverance involves the casting out of demons. We cannot counsel demons. We cast them out. All right? So I just want to encourage us. I'm going to have the final words from Pastor Dex and Pastor Ma, and then, and then I'm, going to, I'm going to have you say a prayer of deliverance. I will say it and you will say it after me. Pastor Mark or Pastor Dexter, finally. Yes, Doc. You know, sometimes, you know, when you look at, at Job, Job chapter 31 verse 1, you have to tell yourself enough is enough, you know. And as we mentioned, you have to realize this now I have a serious problem. You know what Job say? I have made agreement with my eyes. Mm -hmm. so when you make an agreement, you don't go back on your word, you know. No. Sometimes you have to talk to yourself. You understand? The man say, I make agreement with my eyes. How can I look or loss after a virgin? I can't do it. If he was you doing it, he make an agreement. Now, listen, this is it. I am not going to do this again. You understand? And I want to talk to you and tell you, listen, a lot of times we don't understand the help that we have, the counselor that is on our side. Yes. Listen, the Holy Spirit, 
is your helper, you know. When you say, Holy Spirit, I give you my sexuality. Holy Spirit, a weak. Oh, that's your papa. That's your daddy. And let me tell you something. God can fix anything. God can do anything. And God want to help you. But yes. a lot of times we, we try to do it for our own self. You go to God. He is the one who will intercede on your behalf. And you say, Holy Spirit, I need help. Holy Spirit, I need you to guide me. And you could say like Job, I make an agreement with my eyes. Okay. The Bible says, guard your heart. Yes, that's right. Again, because the source of life flow from it. If you allow this thing to come in, what's man? You have to guard your heart. This thing will always be popping up on your phone. You go see a man looking in a certain way with a little short, a little underwear, and always making front look puffy like if he have all of that. Something of the man in a nothing, you know. Everything camera tricks the pain on you. You see a woman, she breast looking thing, and but you have to guard your heart, guard your eyes, folks. It's very, very important. The word of God says, flee, run. You can see like a vehicle coming to lash you. You could imagine that is how you have to look at porn, you know. A vehicle coming to lash you, get out of the way, flee. Every other sin that a man committed is outside the body, you know, but immoral. Immoral man sin against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You have a person, the Holy Spirit, living inside of you. You can't sit down with the Holy Spirit and look at a pawn. You can't do it. He dwells inside of you. So you know how to have some respect. You wouldn't sit down with your pastor and look at a bond. But you're sitting with the Holy Spirit. God, the creator, the boss himself. He living inside of you. And he sees everything that you do. But I know it's a weakness. So what I'm trying to say, get help. Mm -hmm. I know you need help. Get counseling. Eyes a man. You think man don't like to see naked woman? Man like to see naked woman. But I fear God. I know how dangerous it is to look at a blues. You know, we call it blues. That sexual impurity spirit. When that spirit of lust hook you, you can't get with just so you know. And folks, be honest with yourself. Because this demon, it mash up marriage. What caused women to go out there? What caused them? It's a lustful demon. Yes, it is. The same sex he getting outside, you know, inside, you know. But here we're going on. Porn, it's a demon. And let me tell you something. Get counsel. The word of God says, in the multitude of counsel, yes. you will get help. Mm -hmm. You will get, it is safe. And as yes. Minister Dexter say, some men say, listen, but you must go and masturbate before you have sex. No, you don't have to go and masturbate before you ask. Or I don't have to go and look at her blues to stimulate myself. I must love my wife so pure. When I look at she, to go and lay with she. I don't need to watch a prostitute on TV to stimulate my, my sexual organs. No, 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 no. It is not of God. So I will stop there for That's now, right. doctor. Yeah, very correct. It's up to devil. And you know, David looked at a naked woman. And the rest is history, end up committing murder, and all kinds of things started to happen in his life. So we've got to be careful where we position ourselves to see things that we have no business looking at. Pastor Dexter? Amen, Doc. And you know, Pastor Mark was spot on reading from my notes there, Job 31 1, you know. And, you know, even uh, I was looking at a quote by a guy by the name of Michael Johnson from an organization called Covenant Eyes. He made a very interesting comment. He said, when we get our sexual desire satisfied by porn, our sex drive doesn't drive us to marriage. It drives us to more porn. You may want to be married, but porn is just so much easier. The result, you gratify your sexual appetite in a cheap, artificial sort of way instead of letting your desire drive you to prepare and see God's calling in marriage. And I found it very profound because... Pornography is a direct attack against marriages. A yes, direct yes. attack. And when you engage in porn use, 
you are actually encouraging and helping the devil's attack against marriages. And so you are an accomplice yes. to helping the devil fulfill that, that, that whole evil order against God's covenant and institution. And so one of the things that I want to leave with us, if you having issues, communicate healthy communication with your spouse, healthy communication, talk to your pastor, talk to your apostle, your Christian counselor, talk to a professional counselor, talk to somebody. Don't keep it to yourself and you know you're struggling, you're having issues. Speak up, speak out, deal with it. Don't just wait. If you have other issues and you're using pornography as a form of coping, it is a negative form of coping that leads to a pit of destruction. Do not let the, 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 the brief gratification fool you. It would lead you into a pit. And when you recognize you in a pit, it would be much harder to take you out of it. God is able to do everything. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. And so therefore, do not look at your situation through the eyes of the world. Look at your situation through the eyes of God and allow him to take control, take charge and deal with it and deal with us, us all. And if you know somebody struggling, don't ridicule them, but mm -hmm. offer helping, offer helping hand. God bless and thank you so much, Doc. Yes, so very correct. I'm listening to you, Pastor Dex and Pastor Mark, and I'm thinking about sex and God. And when, because God created all of us. If I ask you who created you, you will say God, right? God will make mistakes. God created every part of our body, every organ God has created. And God knows exactly where he wants every part of the body to go and to do. And he created sex. And when he created sex, he created sex to happen in a particular way. He created the penis and he created the vagina. And he knew exactly what are to go into what and how it had to work for you to experience the, the, I mean, the hilt of the sexual pleasure because he created it. And so while you all are talking, I'm thinking, I said, I said, but God, look at how people rubbing themselves of, of the, the ultimate sexual experience because you created it. Because why? Because a counterfeit. You know why? Because we're busy and we like to rush and we don't want to wait and take our time and, and do the thing the way God wants it. We're looking for shortcuts. But if we take our times, and as the gentlemen in the past and they say, you get counseling with your wife, the two of you talk about the issue, you know what I mean? And if you have to go to the doctor, you go to the doctor, you go to your pastor, or wherever, and you talk about the thing, all right? And you explore each other, and you want to know each other's needs, and you my God, and the man take his time with his wife. Yes, I make love to the woman. You take your time, and you 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 helping out your husband and telling him, you know, hey, this what we can do. This what you can do, and you be careful what you're saying to the man if you make a little mistake. These are things that you all have to do in your marriage for the thing to work, to experience what you're supposed to experience. But no, we don't want to do that. That's too much of hard work. It's easy to go down in that direction, the kingdom of darkness direction, and then at the end of the day, what? You're missing out. You think that looking at porn, giving you all of this, watch me now. That sexual appetite that we have, God is the one who put it in us. He created us with it. And you know how that could be satisfied in, in not even satisfied, fulfilled. He, he, he know what to do for you to experience that orgasm and all them things that you want to experience, he knows. You know what I'm saying? So don't, don't rub yourself. That's what I want to say. Don't rub yourself of what the creator, the thing, Right, want you to experience if you do it his way. Don't rub yourself. Right, get back as a single person into learning about it, into waiting, utilizing that time to prepare yourself for marriage, getting help as a single person if you realize that you're addicted because you can't get help and with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be delivered in the name of Jesus. Right, that's what I want to say. You're missing out if you don't do it God's way. Because God has a place for everything to go. When he created sex, where the penis was supposed to go? You, tell, you, ask, you answer me that question. Where was it supposed to go? In your anus, in your mouth, or in your vagina? You tell me where. When God created sex, what was his plan? 
That's the question I want you to answer. Don't, don't, don't look at me. I want you to go into the word of God and spend time with God and really check out God. Say, God, when you created this thing, how you wanted this to happen? However he wanted it to happen, when you do that, take your time and do it, it's how you will experience the hilt of the passion that you want to experience and the orgasm. That's how you will get it. It's not in any shortcut way. Don't rub yourself. Amen? as one of the topics you know that you all will be dealing with so that you know and even the women's ministries because a lot of women are struggling but talk about it all right in an atmosphere that is confidential and non-judgmental and get the help that you need our aim is to give information you know and um and utilizing the word of god so that people can understand what this thing called pornography is all about i mean we just scratched, scratched the surface this evening you know, and how, how um, it affects the individual, the single person, and how it affects children, how it affects a marriage, and how it can be treated with, according to the word of God. And that's basically what we talked about today. All right, so I want you to, to pray. I want to take you into a prayer of deliverance, and then I'm going to ask Pastor Mark to just, to just close us as well. Right? And this is Psalms 51 because David prayed and David, David went through. David had a lot of issues with loss, sexual loss, and David prayed. So I want you to pray after me. Dear God, have mercy on me, O God. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, O God. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, O oh God, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justify when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inward parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast heart within me. Do not cast me from your presence. Or take your Holy Spirit from me, O oh God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing heart to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O oh God. The God who saves me and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will praise you. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart of God you will not despise. 
in your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be gladness. There will be righteous sacrifices. Whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. In the name of Jesus. Dear God, I come before your throne confessing my sin of pornography before you. And you could put in anything else that you want to put in there apart from pornography. I believe that your son Jesus Christ died to save me and to free me from all sin. I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin. I ask you to forgive and deliver me from the sin of pornography. I accept your mercy and your grace. I thank you for delivering me in the name of Jesus. I surrender my life to you. And I thank you for giving me the strength to please you in all of my ways. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Thank you so much for saying that prayer. Pastor Mark, can you pray for, for the persons and pray to close at the same time? Amen. Father, in the mighty, precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray, oh God, for persons on this platform right now, you that is struggling with the spirit of porn, you that is struggling right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command right now that sexual demon, that unclean spirit that is upon you right now, I command that spirit to depart. I command that spirit out. That's right, come out. Come out of her, out of him as well, out. Every spirit of lust, every spirit of porn, Every spirit of masturbation, out. Jesus. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. That's right. Loose the people of God. I release the fire of God all over your body. Out. That's right. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of lust, yes. out. Out in Jesus' name. Out. Out. Loose the people now. Every spirit of fantasy, out in Jesus' name. Up and out. That's right. Come out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command you out. Every homosexual spirit, every lesbian spirit, out. That's right. Loose the people now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of fornication, incest, rape, out. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. All of you that come into porn, I command you. Every sexual demon out. That's right. Come out. Up and out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Loose that woman. Loose that man now. Out in Jesus' name. Up and out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bind the strong man. I bind that perversion spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I release the fire of God. Holy Ghost fire all over you in the name of jesus christ i command everything that is not of god that is in you right now out every serpent spirit out lust out in the mighty name of jesus christ and i cover you with the blood of jesus i cover your mind your spirit your soul and your body and i command them never to return to you in jesus name amen amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise thank God. you so much, Pastor Mark. I want to thank all of you for coming out and, you know, just listening. So we could open up the floor for questions today. We just want to, you know, we know that we would have covered a lot. We want you all, when you go on the YouTube channel, you send out the, uh, the, the video to somebody because I'm sure you will be helping somebody. Sometimes you may not even be aware that the person is, is, is struggling with pornography, but just send out the video to them because a lot of folks are struggling. 
Amen. So God bless you all and thank you all so much, Pastor Dexter. Thank you. And I hand you all right over to Pastor Camille. See you all next week, Saturday, please, God. Amen. Thank you so very much, Doc. And thank you to my dear husband, Pastor Dexter Libellot. And thank you to Pastor Mark Myers. We bless God for the panel. You know, Saturday after Saturday, we continue to appreciate and applaud the move of the Holy Spirit via our segment. You know, again, we have started off the year in such a humble, you know, way, you know, just receiving the topics from him. And, you know, the topics are delving right into, you know, marriages, singles, and hitting home. So we bless him for that. Also, we are here every Saturday. For those who are here for the first time, we welcome you. We may not know who you are, but you know yourself. You're here for the first time. You're streaming locally, regionally, internationally, wherever you're from. We are here every Saturday from 4 p.m. If you have never been here with us before, go over to our YouTube channel. All of our content is loaded right there. So we started in 2020. We have videos from 2020, from August of 2020. All of 2021, 2022, and here we are, 2023, in a new month, February. So we bless God for the opportunity, and we bless God that you continue to fellowship, learn, and grow with us. Yeah, the most important thing is, you know, taking it and making the application after our Saturdays are wrapped up. So we bless God for you. So we look forward to seeing you next Saturday when our Zoom doors are open. Also, we always take the opportunity to invite persons to fellowship with us you may not have your own local assembly we invite you to fellowship with us we are on zoom we always send out the announcement whenever we are going out into the building but until then we are on zoom our zoom services our wednesday evening bible study and discussion 6 30 p.m and our sunday morning worship and prophetic service from 9 30 and before that our precious jewels our sunday schoolers they gather from 9 a.m you know, God bless their hearts. They gather with evangelist Lydia Sutton and our dear brother McKean, Joseph, as they go through their time of learning and growing as well. So we bless God for the opportunity. The same link you use this Saturday is the same link you got. You continue to use Saturday after Saturday on a Sunday if you desire to be a part. On a Wednesday if you desire to, to be a part as well. And if you also desire to have your, your son or your daughter be a part of Sunday school. We are also linked on a Sunday morning when we are here on Zoom, we have that Facebook stream. So we bless God for every avenue that he would have provided to us online to have his word go out and, you know, persons be changed. So we bless you and we look forward to seeing you again.